This video is brought to you by Shudder, but more on that in a moment. Vampires! Nature's sexiest predator, if David Attenborough is to be believed. Everybody loves a good suck. Even magic players enjoy a good suck, and they don't enjoy anything. A little bit of suck suck, a little bit of I drink your blood, who doesn't want that kind of shit? So with the release of Crimson Vow, a Innistrad based Magic the Gathering set just around the corner where vampires are the focus, I thought I'd take a look back on what it was or what it is that has made Magic's vampires so much of a resounding success with the player base. And in order to do that, instead of creating a in-depth historical look at them with actual research, I'm going to do a top 10 video of which vampires I'd invite to dinner. So cast your mind back from Sengir Vampire to Blood Baron of Viscopa, from Baron Sengir himself to Olivia Voldarin. Who would you pick to invite to dinner and hope they don't feast on you and condemn your soul to eternal damnation? Intellectualism is my middle name. So this is a top 10 list and not every entry is going to be horny, although one or two of them will be because vampires are just inherently a horny thing, I find. Maybe I'm weird. To explain the criteria for getting onto this list, it's not just inviting them for a bite to eat. I'm using invite to dinner in a very vague term. That could be going on a date with, having a beer with as a friend, or perhaps inviting to a dinner that is a, a party, a dinner party. But like, come dine with me, but with more blood and death. And if dinner parties sound a bit prim and proper and a little bit too middle class for you, well, I'm sorry, think about it. Vampires are probably, due to their age and stuff, conservative toffs, just with less blood sucking and less victimization of the poor and the weak. So kick back and relax with your favorite carbonated beverage, or maybe even a glass of blood, because ha <laughs> ha, vampires drink blood, don't they? Yes. But first, allow me to introduce a friend of mine. This video is brought to you by Shudder. To give Shudder a go with a 30 day free trial, just follow the link in the description below to Shudder.com using the code Kenobi. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com and use the code Kenobi for a full 30 day trial. Shudder is a streaming service for the horror enthusiast. It has often been dubbed the Netflix of horror and it has a huge range of varied content on the platform from classics like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari if you really want to go back to the roots with German expressionism, right up to Night of the Living Dead if you want to see the origins of the zombie fiction, to modern masterpieces like the fantastic Mandy. If you haven't seen this movie, I absolutely implore you to do so. I beg you, it's incredible. You also have access to a lot of Shudder exclusives too, like Slacks, a film where a killer pair of jeans terrorizes a fashion boutique. No, I am not joking. Leap of Faith is a documentary on the making of The Exorcist that is on my watch list right now, as is Elvira's 40th anniversary very scary, very special special. So what are you waiting for? Get involved with the ongoing 61 Days of Halloween event right now with a 30 day trial via the link in the description below and use the code Kenobi to secure that trial and support the channel. If you're on my Patreon Discord, I will be sharing my to watch list which I've put films that I've enjoyed in the past and things I intend to watch in the Discord, so look out for that too. Thanks to Shudder for supporting this video. Let's crack on with this completely intellectual list. Let's start with an honorable mention, shall we? Some of you out there will be waiting for Big Daddy Edgar Markov or Sorin on this list, and honestly, I'm just not feeling it. They both seem like complete fucking arseholes. Like the kind of people that I do not want to be involved with, hang out with, or chat shit with. They seem quite self-absorbed, and I'm too self-absorbed myself, darling, to put up with that shit. Number 10. Vampire Hexmage. Now, Hexmage has been around for a while. From Zendikar originally, she has been blowing up planeswalkers and summoning 2020 demonic avatar creature things from underneath the dark, dark depths of ice for quite some time. Being from Zendikar, she'll be able to regale us with stories of pre and post Eldrazi cataclysm, I guess. Although those anecdotes might be a little bit too tragic for feel good dinner conversation. Before dinner though, we might have to ask her about her personal hygiene as she seems to be, I don't know, harboring some sort of beetle infection, which is honestly a little bit grim. Also on an unrelated note, boob window. Oh, is it getting warm in here? Is it just me? I'm going to jump her off. Number nine, Zadek, Lord of Secrets. Zadek is the only Ravnican to make the list. And again, that gives him a unique point to tell us about different experiences. It brings a bit of that, I don't know, urban sophistication 
to the whole situation. Beyond that, he was once upon a time the leader of the Demir Guild, and he is the Lord of Secrets. I'm almost certain he would have many a tale to tell if we could pry a few secrets from those cold, dry lips. Or alternatively, he'd speak in hushed tones and not actually open up about much, kind of just suggesting or implying he knows more and making it give him some sort of superiority over everyone else at the party. I want to say something that sounds very middle class here, but I have a friend who's an actor who will often tell me, oh, I've got a new part, and I'll ask them, oh, cool, what, what's that new part then? They're like, I can't tell you, I'm under an NDA. So what the fuck did you bring it up then? Number eight. Irini Sengir. The first and not the last Sengir on this list. She's not actually a Sengir by birthright. She was transformed or changed to be a vampire by Baron Sengir himself. She was once a dwarven princess on the plane of, I believe, he's from Dominaria, right? God, I look like a fake gamer girl not knowing that. The reason I picked Irini here is because, I, well, other than the traumatic anecdotes of, like, you know, being stolen away from her family and turned into a vampire, which, again, might be quite morbid and quite soul-destroying for a dinner conversation, but I think she might be a bit wilder at parties. As you can see from her art, she's not above setting off fireworks in the toilets of your local Weatherspoons. I think she'd be one of the more fun ones for the after party. After you finish dinner and you're going out on the town, I think she'd be a right laugh until she gets arrested. Baron Sengir comes in at number seven. And well, I didn't want him to make the list. I don't like his attitude, his demeanor. He seems a bit cocky and arrogant. He's dressed like a tit. He just seems like the kind of guy who would take over a party and just talk about himself the whole time. And well, I'm that kind of guy too, so we'd probably conflict with each other. But at the same time, you know, if you don't invite him, you'll never hear the fucking end of it because he's quite an influential little bastard. What an insufferable little arsehole Baron Sengir appears to be. But it's courtesy, absolute courtesy and respect to history to invite Baron Sengir to this party. He is the original legendary vampire after all. He created the Dada. original vampire with Sengir Vampire in Alpha. You know, pay our dues and all that shit. At number six, we have Balustrade Spy. Balustrade Spy ticks all the same boxes as Irini, even if it doesn't appear like that at first. Beneath the Superman floating at balcony in a rather romanticized ideal and the suave, pale James Bond element of him being a spy, I think Balustrade Spy is probably a depraved individual. They've been hanging out for the longest time with oops all spells and other fucking stupid dredge style combo decks in Legacy and more recently Modern, where they're not used in any fair way, they're only used in degenerate ways. I think much like Irini after the food has settled and you're going out, out, I think Balustrade Spy would get on it hard with you and wouldn't be above taking a shit in a public bar room's urinal as a dirty protest against what one of the bouncers said to them in a rude way or eat a kebab at four o'clock in the morning on a curbside if vampires can eat kebabs. I've just realized vampires can't eat food, can they? I do think, much like Irini, he might be a bit of a liability. So maybe don't stick around if he gets on the sauce a bit too fucking hard and ends up getting arrested. Number five, the Blood Artist. Blood Artist brings some culture and some semblance of integrity to the party, but this can go one of a few ways. They might be cagey and very uh, not keen to talk about their art, almost a bit pompous, uptight, and maybe pretentious, and nobody wants that shit. Maybe they've recently made some money doing blood-painted NFTs, and they're getting a bit funny when Irini brings up that she would prefer if art and capitalism wasn't burning down the rainforest to make a profit, so there'll be a bit of a dispute at your dinner party. Or maybe they get drunk and show everyone the tasteful nudes they've been doing for commission. The latest one just happens to have an anthropomorphic cow and a lot of tentacles involved. One of these three situations I wouldn't mind at a dinner party, I'll let you guess in the comment section below which one I'm okay with. Number four, Markov Servant. I'm just interested in hearing what she has to say. Number three, Blood Flow Connoisseur. Blood Flow Connoisseur is the friend you turn to when you want to know where to go to dinner, where's good in town to eat, where we've got to simply try the sausage, if you will. Where to get a reservation for your group of friends. You've all turned out to be blood-sucking vampires in this scenario, which means you may have made some very questionable life choices at some point. But in addition to having strong opinions on where we should eat and what's good, if you look at the flavor text, it seems like they've been on the wrong side of Sorin before. Death not for survival, but for vanity and pleasure. This is the decadence I sought to curb, says Sorin in the flavour text of this card. 
All right, boomer. Number two, the cordial vampire. And we're not talking about lime cordial or lemon cordial. Am I right, kids? <laughs> Uh, Cordial Vampire is the only one on the list I trust not to suck me dry at the first chance they get. Although, honestly, maybe that's a bad thing. They look inviting. They're literally cordial. In the same way that I am literally called Pleasant Kenobi. Pleasant Cordial? Like, names can't lie. That's the law. Even in the art and the flavor text, he's inviting you in. Which is nice. It feels like they might be the only person on the list to reciprocate to invite you to their dinner parties. The worst thing in the world, as an outgoing person myself, is to invite and organize things with your friendship group and then no one invites you to shit. Oh, that got, oh, that got heavy, quick. And at number one, did you guess it right? Did you guess it right? Olivia Voldaren. Who else could make the top of this fucking list if not Olivia motherfucking Voldaren? You can't call her the OG because that's obviously Senge Vampire Band and Senge himself, but she just seems so much more exciting and interesting as a host and a guest at a dinner party than fucking Baron Snooty Tooty Senge over there. She floats above the dinner hall, above her guests who are all wearing like pantomime or court masks. She's dressed up to the fucking nines and she's already started drinking. And that's where I know I'm gonna be friends. I love a good old decadent day drinking session, even if it's probably not daylight outside because that would kill her. Okay, she just likes to start early, and so do I. I love smashing a few before dinner. People are gonna think I'm a fucking alcoholic if I make jokes like that, aren't they? She dresses well, she looks good, and she's the life of the party, and bonus points for leaving that dickhead Sorin in stone at the end of the Shadows of Inner Stride block story. So what do you think? Have I missed someone here? Is there a vampire that I very evidently should have included, or do you feel like my, my picks were pedestrian? Should I have gone for, like, Dragon Vampire, wherever the fuck his name is? Let me know in the comment section below if I have missed one. Don't forget, this video is brought to you by Shudder, so check out the link in the description below for that as well, for a 30-day free trial, which helps to support the channel as well. And don't forget, as always, Patreon is how you can support the channel directly, but if you can't do Patreon, click the fucking like button, smash that bell, subscribe and all that shit, and I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta for now.